A representative from Larson contacted me and asked if I'd be willing to show one of their antennas on my channel. So I've already got some Larson antennas in use. I've got one on my car, I've got one in the attic of my garage for my secondary 2 meter radio, and my friend Scott, who's on the fire department, tells me that Larson antennas are all over their fire trucks. So because I'm already familiar with Larson and their products, and I know they work and hold up over time, I thought it would be worthwhile to show you guys another one. So today, we're going to be taking a look at this BSA-150 base station antenna that they sent me to take a look at. Let's get it out of the package and see what we've got. So here's what comes in the kit. First, of course, is the antenna whip. This piece is the antenna base, and then there are four radial arms that are just taped here for now. So on the coax side of the base, we have an SO239 receptacle. And on the antenna side, we have the same SO239 style connection. However, the kit also includes an adapter to make this work with an NMO mount antenna. Two hose clamps are included, as well as the antenna coil and base. And then this paper just talks about making sure that if you're gonna set this antenna up, you stay away from overhead power lines and things like that. To get started with assembly, I'm just gonna cut this tape so I can get the radial arms removed and set aside. Now I'll pull the rest of this tape off of here. Now I'm gonna grab the Allen wrench that was supplied with the kit and I'm gonna loosen up these screws that are in all the corners of the main bracket. So now I'm gonna grab a radial arm and I'm gonna install it into the hole that's in the corner of this bracket. And now I can tighten up the screws and then repeat the process on the other three corners. And of course it's gonna start raining, why wouldn't it? The antenna that's supplied with this kit is actually a UHF mount antenna. But if I wanna use an NMO mount antenna, I can do that by installing the adapter that's supplied with the kit. I'll first pull off this dust cover, and then I'll put this rubber bushing on. Then I'll bring this brass piece in, and I'll orient it so that these two divots are facing out. And then just thread it on to the connector here. Now I happen to have a full set of these pin pliers that I inherited from a cousin. So I'm going to use these to tighten this up, but I expect that a pair of needle nose pliers would work here as well. Now I'll take this nail head pin and I'll insert it into the center part of this connector with the wider parts sticking up like that. And now I can install any NMO mount antenna that I happen to have on this base. Since the antenna that Larson supplied with the kit is a UHF mount antenna, I removed the NMO adapter before installing the antenna base. So now I'll just grab this PO150 antenna base and thread this onto the connector. And as I thread this on, I'll make sure that this center pin engages in the center receptacle on the connector. So now I'll grab the whip and install it into the antenna base. And just to make sure it seats in, I'm gonna loosen these set screws with the supplied Allen wrench. So now I'll just tighten up these set screws and we should be good to go. For testing purposes, I'm just gonna set this up on one of my canopy poles. So I've got the hose clamp wrapped around the pole and I'm gonna slide the base of the antenna down until the hose clamp locks into this notch that's on the bracket. And then I'll tighten up the screw on the hose clamp to lock everything in place. So I've got the antenna set up on my test pole about seven feet off the ground to the base of the antenna. I've got about 25 feet of RG8X connected between the antenna and my MFJ analyzer. So I know RG8X isn't the best coax to use for VHF, but it's a fairly short run and it's what I've got to work with. So that's what we're gonna use. So now I'll fire up the analyzer and I'll do a sweep so we can have a look at how the antenna performs electrically. So if we start off around 140 megahertz, you can see that the SWR starts off at about 1.2 and we're getting about 82 ohms resistance. So it actually doesn't look too bad down there. If I scroll up and start getting into the 2 meter band, you can see that right about at 144 megahertz, we're looking at 50 ohms, we're getting about three, 2 or 3 ohms of reactance and 1.0 SWR. And then up through the 2 meter band, everything continues to look pretty good for the most part. As we get up towards the top of the band, resistance starts to increase a little bit. SWR goes up to about 1.1. So now, if I scroll up and start getting into the public service VHF band, 153 to 155 megahertz, things start to kind of go south a little bit, 
SWR is still showing low-ish at about 1.4, but you can see the resistance is climbing pretty high. So if I were on the fire department or had a business or something and wanted to use this, I would need to trim that whip down just a little bit. But for two meter amateur radio use, this thing should work just fine as it is. So the interesting thing about two meter 5 8 antennas is that they can be used on six meters generally as sort of a quarter wave antenna. So if we scan up through the six meter band, 50 megahertz to 54, we'll see what everything looks like. You can see down here at the bottom part of the band, where we would run sideband, we're getting a resistance of about 26 ohms, SWR is 1.6. We'd probably need to use a tuner just to touch things up, but it would be usable here. And now if I start to scroll up and get into the FM portion of the band, you can see things are looking okay. 51 ohms resistance, 1.2 SWR, a little bit of reactance at 11 ohms, which you would expect with sort of a short antenna. So again, it would work, but we probably want to put a tuner on there just to touch it up a little bit. So now I'm going to get a radio hooked up and we'll see what we can hear on this antenna. The way it was, uh, I had the whole 820 line, 820S, I had the 520. So it seems like this Larson antenna is working pretty good. Now one thing I forgot to mention earlier in the video is that you can buy just the base by itself from places like HRO and DX Engineering. That way, if you already have an antenna or want to buy a different antenna, say maybe a dual band antenna, you can put it on there and it'll work just fine. If you want to learn more about this antenna, check the links in the description below and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.